Hello. Hello. Hello, Anisha. Am I audible? Hello. Hello, Anisha. Am I audible? You can chat also. Am I audible clearly? Hello. Is it clear? Fine. Let us start. Hello. Am I audible? OK, OK. OK, Anisha. Yesterday, we have seen just broadly the syllabus. Today, we will go deep into Stone Age. First, let us see previous year questions. In most of the cases, questions will come in the form of map pointing. You can see here in 2012, simply they mention a prehistoric site. They did not mention even whether it is a Paleolithic site, Neolithic site, or Mesolithic site. Only prehistoric site. A prehist now you see in 2012 itself, how many prehistoric sites? Six prehistoric sites. So this shows the significance of Stone Age. When it comes to 2013, now you can see, now a little bit advanced. They have specifically are asking a Paleolithic and Mesolithic site a Mesolithic site, a Paleolithic site, Neolithic, Megalithic, Chalcolithic, single site, which is having the evidence of Neolithic, Megalithic, and Chalcolithic. Paleolithic, Neolithic, Chalcolithic, and Chalcolithic. Likewise, every year you can see at least three questions here. In 2015, in GS also there was a question. Generally in GS, students are not at all worried about ancient India, but you see the question how difficult question for general studies perspective. Mesolithic rock cut architecture of India not only reflects the cultural life of the times, but also a fine aesthetic sense comparable to modern painting. So they are comparing ancient times with modern times. So this shows the significance of Stone Age. Similarly, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20. So likewise, same. So most of the questions are related to map pointing. Now. First, you give the heading, Stone Age. Chapter, Stone Age. Stone Age. Now, broadly, we can divide into three parts. This only for understanding purpose I am drawing. But when it comes to mains answer writing, we have to know how to write introduction, conclusion, and all. This is Old Stone Age.
मिडिल एंड न्यू स्टोनेज दिस ओल्ड स्टोन इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड पैलियोलिथिक मिडिल इज मेसोलिथिक न्यू इज मनीषा इज इट क्लियर राइटिंग ऑन द बोर्ड एंड वॉइस ऑल क्लियर ओके गुड पैलियोलिथिक मेसोलिथिक नियोलिथिक If you see the evolution, I will show here. This is the globe. Initially, we human beings were not there like today. We evolved over a period of time from the animals. Initially, we were very close to the ape. Evidence shows that our ancestors started migrating from this location. from africa they migrated to different parts of the world whatever evidence is coming to the earliest human like they are called hominid fossils you can use this term hominid fossils because upsc once asked about this also hominid fossils means human like human like evidence whether there was some kind of evidence or not across the globe after independence in india also for this archaeologists started looking in india we got hominid fossil in a place called hathnora Hathnora is in Madhya Pradesh. Next, I will draw map also. You can easily identify. Evidence came Hathnora. One skull was found. One skull was found. This shows that. even in india also human like features because in the evolution the way we are seeing today like the kind of intelligence we have the kind of skill we have it was not like that earlier even we were not even talking with two legs we were like animals with four legs and gradually homo erectus hathnora and there is one more place also called odai this is in tamil nadu in these two places we got hominid like fossils and in bimbetka also some evidence is there but still not confirmed near pune also near pune and bimbetka evidence is there but still research is going on but these two are confirmed so this is how hominid like fossils even in india also identified because this is very important when it comes to the colonial perspective because they were always saying that india was not a civilized one indians don't know how to live british came here to civilize indians all those theories were propagated by the british just to subjugate indians once we got independence we are free and we started excavating and we started doing a lot of research and this is how we came to know that even in india also whatever features they were feeling proud in european areas india is also no less than that this evidence will help in understanding how our ancestors also started living but these evidences are very limited human like fossils over a period of time it would have vanished because we are a monsoon country now you see our geography also play an important role 
we are a monsoon country when it comes to africa this is desert like area and this is not a monsoon area the evidence will persist for a long time but when it comes to india we are a monsoon country this is one of the reasons when it comes to gangetic valley even the basic paleolithic evidence also not clearly visible because gangetic valley is a monsoon and very plain area so much population lot of activities and if you see the urbanization also all those things might have resulted in the vanishing the evidence so this is why one problem comes when it comes to indian subcontinent but in africa the population is scarce climate wise also that's why the preserve these evidences were preserved monsoon country this resulted in erosion of the evidence that's why human like fossils become difficult but stone tools stone tools they remain because it is become it is very difficult for the erosion also even though they eroded but still they survived and we come to know about these people only from the stone tools that is why this period is also called stone age because this is very significant aspect in understanding our ancestors i will give few things you keep writing but when it comes to the main science writing this section will not help but to give the connectivity it will help so briefly like a evolution of human species because this part in detail dealt by anthropology in our history our main concern is the cultural aspect how human beings started their economic life their agriculture life their social life like that but to understand that this is a little bit introduction is required first one is australopithecus right this australopithecus just two words only you write it is a term it is a term that originated that originated in latin and it means southern ape and it means southern ape now you see the name australo that's why australia actually the australia meaning is southern continent that's how they give the name australia australopithecus southern ape this is very close to our human modern human this species is also called right this species is also called proto human okay sit down this species is also called proto human this term proto many times we will get in our history can you give in some other place where we can use proto proto history and even in case of urban areas indus valley civilization we call first urbanization first time in 6th century bce we got second urbanization but when it comes to later vedic time period the urban life just started we will not consider vedic life as urban life and the towns which emerged we call proto urban so just before the emergence of main urban areas proto proto means like like human beings proto human 
This is Australopithecus. The time period is, write this. This species possessed these things only in our history we will not use anywhere. But for our understanding purpose, just a few introduction is required. This species possessed both ape-like and human characteristics. Both human-like and human-like, both ape and human. If you see the time period, this is 5.5 million to 1.5 million. Million means how many lakhs years ago? Ah, this is 55 lakh, 15 lakh years. And this is the time period, during this time period, we were evolving. And in fact, the present day human species, any idea what we call, what is the name of present day human species? Homo sapiens sapien. And do you know what is the time period of this? This is 10,000 BC, just 10,000 years ago only. But Homo sapien, before Homo sapiens sapien, we were called Homo sapiens. That is around 3 lakh years. Now you can see, we were relatively very young species on this planet Earth. This is why this Australopithecus, from this point onwards, human-like uh, characteristics emerged. Next one. Now history will start. The moment human beings started using the brain, human history starts. In the next category, this is Australopithecus. Second one, Homo habilis. Homo habilis. It means a skillful man, skillful. Because of this skill only, he started making stone tools. This is where history begins now. Homo habilis, it means skillful man. The time period is 2.4 million to 1.4. So even at this stage, even though skill acquired by the human species, still they are not able to walk with the two legs. In the next evolution, Homo erectus. This is the beginning of human with the two legs. Homo erectus, this is means upright man. Upright man. And this we can say up to 2,50,000 years it was evolving. 1.62, 2,50,000 years evolution was going on. Now the real beginning of human history starts. This is Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens. Any idea what is the meaning of Homo sapien? What is that? Thinking man, right, wise man. And we call this, this the beginning and around 3 lakh. 
years onwards started and the the stage which we are homo sapiens sapiens the present day so this is full fledged man so it's a continuous evolution and around 10000 by 10000 bc this evolved fully up to here just to begin now the real history our main answer also will start now these species they started migrating in different places earliest uh, this homid uh, human like features emerged from different parts in africa from there they migrated because at that time crossing river is very very crossing ocean is unimaginable they have to follow the land route only that's why they used these land routes and gradually they spread to different parts and through this route through this route they came to north america also and south america also that's how human beings spread across the globe now when it comes to our answer writing why people migrate this is even important in the present contemporary context also we are talking about climate change because of climate change some people are moving from one place to the other place suppose if deserts are increasing desertification expanding the desert people are forced to move from one place to the other place so throughout the history these migrations are very common this is very important to understand the same reasons are going to be same for early man also when it comes to vedic people according to the so called as of now we believe that aryans also migrated from central asia this central asian migration also there might be some reasons these reasons are important for our examination point of view whether it comes to gs also whether it comes to our history optional writing you can write this you give you give the heading why human species migrated why human species migrated this explains why from one continent to the other continent people moved and it also the answers the same within india also how people moved from one part of indian subcontinent to the other part just you can have india map here because now we are going to focus on india but the causes are going to be same one you can give a small map no issue these are the places in our map pointing also 
UPSC can ask by making pinpointing these two places and can ask Fazil site. Simply Fazil site. One is in Madhya Pradesh, another one is Tamil Nadu. Now we got the evidence, human like evidence. That means in the earliest stage, around 15 lakh years ago, 14 lakh years ago, this might have happened. And from there, people might have migrated to different places, or to this place people came means they should have come from this area only. Ocean is very difficult to cross, through land only they have to cross. So that means in the Indian subcontinent also, people started evolving. But Paleolithic stone tools started emerging around 3 lakh, 1 lakh, 50,000 years onwards. So much research started. Our archaeologists before independence also, after independence also, they started working on that. And they got so much evidence in the form of stone tools only. Because of monsoon country, so much fossils are vanished. Why human species migrate? Can you throw some light? Why people, suppose if someone wants to move from this location to this location, what would have been the reason? Resources, very good. Warm climate in search of uh, better comfort or better climate. Yes. Terrain. Terrain. Okay. Terrain. Yes. So you think just like for food, in search of food and better comfort. Once in the initial stages, people were looking for food, food only. If you take even today also, today when it comes to India, United States, China, or European countries are enjoying with a lot of comforts. But there are many people within India also, and if you consider Africa, still people are struggling to meet the basic needs, basic food item. They used to keep on migrate from one place to the other place. Even in our, just to COVID time, what we have seen. From villages, people go to urban areas, and during COVID time, whenever there is a pandemic, whenever there is a threat to the life, people again go back to their villages to safeguard their lives. In those times, the economic activities were not this much. They had to depend on only on environment. Environment means they have to hunt or gather, hunting and gathering. Suppose if they have sufficient animals in their neighborhood, they will hunt and they'll get the food. If animals are not there, and they have to search for the animals, and along with the animals, they used to migrate. When it comes to gathering, suppose if they are depending on the nature, plants, roots, due to seasonal, in some seasons, some fruits might be available. In some season, they may not be available. If it is a deciduous forest area, trees will shed very difficult to get the food. That's why they look for other opportunities in other places. So geography plays a very, very dominant role in making the history. This is one of our history optional question also. Here I will give you the list. This list you can use as it is for the mains examination. Start writing. Hunter gatherers. Hunter gatherers who relied on hunting. Who relied on hunting wild animals. Wild animals. Kama fishing. Fishing and gathering edible plants. And gathering edible plants. Moved from place to place. 
moved from place to place for several reasons. For several reasons. First one, resource availability. Resource availability. Second one, depletion of resources. This resource availability, if they get food here, they will come from this to this, that is inward migration. Resource depletion, if there is no resource here, it is outward migration. That's why resource availability and depletion of resources. Next one, climate and environmental changes. climate and environmental changes and in fact up to 10,000 BC it was called Ice Age also called Pleistocene and you imagine in the Ice Age surviving is very difficult today in this part of the globe Antarctic region and Arctic region the population is very limited because very cold climate but when it comes to this middle latitude and in our area population is very high because of the comfortable climate climate and environmental changes and particularly up to 10000 bc people were we were calling paleolithic old stone age and the real life began after 10000 bc due to climate change temperatures increased and people were able to produce the agriculture and this is a revolutionary change. That's why even historian, uh, some scholars like V. Gordon Child called it as a Neolithic revolution. But it's not a revolu revolution, means it should be a sudden one. But in our history, nothing is going to be a sudden one. It's an evolution. But one argument came like a Neolithic revolution. It shows how many changes suddenly happened, given the time scale. Lacks of years, people were depending on nature. But within few thousands of years, life completely changed. So in that context, he considered it as a revolution. That is how climate is going to play a very, very important role in the history. Next point. Following the seasons. You can just uh, give this subheading only. Following seasons. Summer season, winter season. Next, this factor is going to be very, very important. This will explain even Aryan migration or North people coming to Deccan, Deccan people going to North, different reasons. Why Turkish invasions, all those things. Social and cultural factors. social and cultural factors like conflicts like conflicts comma trade and marriages conflicts comma trade and marriages few examples only i am giving in the present context for example, many Syrian people are migrating towards Europe. One of the reasons is conflict, continuous conflict. 
and probably the same reason why vedic people also migrated war like uh, people continuously in this area this resources are very limited people were fighting for the limited resources and naturally they will move towards the other area suppose if you take even in india today why many people go for other countries like usa to get more better opportunities this also explains why many american people came from europe because these american colonies were made up by the many europeans one of the reasons is the conflicts in 15th and 16th centuries there was protestant catholics they were continuously fighting and they don't want to live in that uh, conflict zone and they migrated and later they formed their own culture so likewise throughout history we have same is the case with the uh, paleolithic stage also next one last point exploring the unknown exploring the unknown out of curiosity also some people may migrate this is these points you can ready madely use wherever it is next one next heading you give the contribution of stone age people contribution of stone age people now i will make uh, one table here you will understand that you give this table after this table i will ask you just to write uh, in 100 words answer this will help you to practice answer writing also here this timeline is up to 10000 bc and when it comes to indian subcontinent a place called mehargad from this place first time agriculture evidence came first time village settlement came from hunting gathering stage to agriculture stage these people were depending on hunting plus gathering when it comes to neolithic agriculture
Suppose if I ask you the question, what is the contribution of Neolithic people to humanity? What we can say? They taught us how to practice agriculture. When it comes to technology, these people invented fire. These people invented wheel. Wheel? This is fire. Now, in between domestication of animals in Mesolithic stage, fishing activities became common. One reason is this is cold climate here climate change, warm climate, because of warm, more rainfall. As a result, more lakes came and people got one more subsistence pattern, fishing. And this became even warmer. Wild grains started growing and people learned how to grow cultivation also agriculture emerged. Once wheel came, pottery, transportation, village setup, everything emerged. Can you write in 100 words? Later, I will give different places. Those places are very, very important for map pointing. Write the question. Write a short note on the contribution of, can you try? Write a short note on the contribution of Stone Age people. Simple. I will give some more points also here. For example, when it comes to Neolithic, they started living in villages. They started even social norms, religious beliefs. So like proper society emerged in this time period. So now, using this content, can you try that?
10 marks means one page. Yeah. Now you started here, up to one. So write for 10 marks. When it comes to mains, most important point is how to use the space.
100 words then ओके स्ट्रक्चर इज गुड आई विल गिव पॉइंट्स हाउ टू गिव एक्जैक्टली टू द क्वेश्चन एज ऑफ नो यू डिस्क्राइब दैट्स गुड वन वेन इट कम्स टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ स्टोनेज इफ क्वेश्चन सेस वी हैव टू ब्रिंग दोज वर्ड्स ऑल्सो दिस इज द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ नियोलिथिक दिस इज द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ मेसोलिथिक दिस इज द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ पैलियोलिथिक लाइक वाइज After him, I will give the reference also. then okay because in one page examiner will always look for the demand of the question we describe many things but examiner always look for what exactly upsc demanding and if those words are identified then he will give the marks uh sources like definitely definitely that i am going to give actually that will enrich your answer this description will bring you 40% of the marks out of 10 mark four marks you will get but if you want to get a six mark six and of mark now when it comes to agriculture in a place from mehargad we will learn how agriculture is made and when it comes to wheel made pottery transportation in so many places for example chopani mando in belan valley actually those things will make you 60% of the answer so because foundation course na so gradually i will go step by step now i will give the reference now you see how the same question can be answered write few points i will give bullet points whenever you require you can expand it they gave the points 
they gave the knowledge of fire question is asking about contribution what we learn from them they contributed they gave the knowledge of fire so i am coming like uh, you can see stage by stage they taught us domestication of animals for the first point in bracket you give paleolithic people they gave the knowledge of fire in bracket paleolithic people the same sentence you can give like paleolithic people gave us the fire and in second point in bracket you give mesolithic mesolithic people gave us the technique of domestication of animals next point neolithic people taught us neolithic people taught us the practice of agriculture practice of agriculture and growing crops like growing crops like rice wheat cotton next one neolithic people also gave us wheel kama pottery 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 kama construction of houses construction of houses and living in villages today also most of india lives in village lives in villages community living the basic they laid the foundation for socio social setup they laid the foundation for the existing social setup next point they also contributed for they also contributed for rudimentary religious beliefs because their religious beliefs are not advanced like today beginning rudimentary religious beliefs in india in last point they laid the foundation for they laid the foundation for indian culture indian culture like paintings on the wall now you see these points are contribution if you elaborate 100 words without mentioning here i did not mention any word any evidence 40% of the marks will come just for description but now whenever you give the lot of evidence whenever they laid the foundation for cave painting bimbetka adam gar when you bring those elements that is how it makes 60% and if you make the map and if you show this place painting this place uh, agriculture first agriculture this place rice this place cotton and with that map that becomes now i will show that also so that you will get other idea now you draw india map
So in that same answer, you can bring this. Mehargad. Village life. Growing wheat. Cotton. And in this place, production of rice, pottery, housing, here also housing. Because UPSC nowadays changing the question pattern. If you see GS question earlier, how from Dola Vera what we learn? That kind of questions were coming. From Harappans what we learn in the present context. So we have many things to learn even from Stone Age itself. And when it comes to this location, now you see how geography plays important role. When it comes to this area, a lot of Gangetic Valley, alluvial soil, rice cultivation is possible. But this is rain shadow area, drought prone area. From this place, we learn how to cultivate ragi, bajra. And in all these places, this agriculture practice supplemented by domestication of animals. Here, here many places are there. For example, we have Brahmagiri, Tekkalikota, Maski, these places we will go one by one because we have to deal in detail. Just I am giving you how when it comes to UPSC point of view, answer writing. Knowing the facts, one aspect in reading the history, but how to use those facts in answer is the second skill. When it comes to here, Chopani Mando, you can give one example. And here, Bhimbetka. Another place, Adamgar. Adamgar. So this is cave paintings. So the tradition continued from that time. Gradually it is evolved. And here, any idea in Jammu and Kashmir? Burjuham and Gufkral. Burjuham, Gufkral. They learn how to use the existing resources to live in very cold condition. That is pit dwellings. Pit dwellings. And in this place also, Davo jelly heading. Agriculture in the northeast. And evidence will go on. The more evidence you know, you can give a lot of things. And this space is not sufficient. But again, only 100 words you have to write. You have only seven minutes, eight minutes maximum. What best you can give? So this is how if you give this map and this evidence, this will make you to 60% of the score. 
so directly start writing about the demand of the question once you start writing demand of the question in less number of words you will get the maximum score so this is how the beginning of hominid fossils human like fossils in india we got hathnora and odai two places and thereafter in the evolution australopithecus then homo habilis then homo erectus then homo sapiens and homo sapiens sapiens this is the biological evolution and when it comes to biological evolution you can bring the person who contributed for the understanding of biological evolution charles darwin origin of species so that person name also you can bring those facts only will make difference next one why human species migrated this is where exactly our history starts because these common these are very common you can use these points why vedic people migrated same reason why early vedic people migrated to later vedic area same reasons why turkish people migrated from central asia to india same during mongol tradition during mongol conquest many people in central asia came to india during gilgitmish time period because of conflicts and whenever climate is very harsh people move from one place to the other place so these points are very common same reasons were there even during ancient time period also resource availability depletion of resource climate social cultural factors exploring the unknown this is the contribution of stone age people this is how upsc asks but when it comes to details now we have to go into the details give in one so you need to draw this one in paleolithic itself we have different different stages and this difference comes the technology was not always common because it is almost lakhs of years in paleolithic itself in those years gradually there was change in the technology usage of the tools based on the technological changes paleolithic stage was divided into three parts lower middle upper when it comes to lower they used the core tools pebble and core tools and these are the hand axe cleavers and chopping tools their main purpose was their main food habit was hunting and gathering and in hunting they need the tools for hunting the animals also for cutting the trees or for cutting the hides and for chopping the meat for those purposes they created this and later in the middle they started making sharp tools those are called flake they learned how to make even more sharp and later they even made they both made on both sides they made sharper tools they are called blade tools when it comes to mesolithic they used small tools they are called microliths when it comes to neolithic they started polishing and this polished stone tools became based on these differences we categorize into these many categories and when it comes to the subsistence hunting and gathering here hunting and gathering hunting and gathering now you see in mesolithic already climate is changing more warmer climate that's why you will see fishing activities also more rainfall more lakes people understood the importance of uh, fishing also and for these kind of activities they made these tools microliths because for fishing they need very small tools 
and for domestication of animals they started and these small tools once they understood how to initially they collected the wild grains if you see for example in gangetic valley in terai region even today also some different varieties of wild grain is available naturally people will go and collect this from the terai region similarly around 7000 8000 years ago people might have do, done the same thing and they understood why can't they grow themselves and started growing that is how it has changed the life of people itself because once agriculture came they got the lot of leisure time and once leisure time comes other human activities started emerging in the neolithic time period so food production based on animal and plant domestication let us make this diagram i will broadly make and you can also do this will make like this lower paleolithic middle upper i will give the timeline also so that you will have an idea in r s sharma itself this timeline will come this is 6 lakh from 6 lakh to 1 lakh 50000 <coughs> bc lower paleolithic and i will give the places also from which places we got this evidence this is 1 lakh 50000 to 35000 bc this is 35000 to 10000 bc this technology is core tools timeline technology directly upsc will never ask on this directly the way we have written earlier that is how upsc asked the question but these facts you can include to improve the answer core tools flake tools blade tools blade tools when it comes to places you need not to worry about uh, lower middle upper paleolithic but whenever paleolithic site comes you can use anywhere whatever may be the lower middle anywhere you can use it i am giving some places here in jammu and kashmir उत्तर बैनी
Shivalik in present day Pakistan area. In Rajasthan, Didwana. Didwana. Mogara Hill. Mogara Hill. If you observe in present day Rajasthan, this is desert area. But at this time, it was not a desert. And if you see the animal evidence also, the animal evidence are bones identified in these locations. Those animals live in the thick forest area. That kind of animal evidence is coming. That means even though today it is desert, that time it was not a desert. I will continue here in Paleolithic. Then in Gujarat, Hiran Valley, Bimbetka, Adam Gad. In Madhya Pradesh, Bhilan Valley, Chota Nagpur Plateau, in Andhra Pradesh, Nagarjuna Konda. In Andhra Pradesh, in Tamil Nadu, do you have any idea? In Tamil Nadu, Paleolithic. Odai and another one, Attirampakam Gudiyam Caves. So we can use Attirampakam. I will show this image, you can I will draw the map. You can place that. These are some of places. And when it comes to middle, Didwana in Rajasthan, in Gujarat, Hiran Valley. Next, Buddha Pushkar Lake. In Maharashtra, there is a place called Kalpi. Uh, Kalpi in UP. In Maharashtra, Nivasa. Whenever Paleolithic means, don't worry about lower, middle, upper. You use anywhere. That's everything is a Paleolithic. Here, Sanghavo. Sanghavo in northwestern part. Buddha Pushkar. Bilan Valley, Bilan Valley, Chopani Mando,
बागोर पाइसरा This is in Andhra Pradesh. When it comes to suppose I will show map pointing also. because we have map that's why it is very important now also i will show you This is how UPSC gives. You can see. Likewise, it is coming. Now, when we go to this. in 2022 first one is paleolithic in 2021 paleolithic where it is located in which state rajasthan, rajasthan. Oh, can you identify which say which site didwana so in that way it will help us because this carries 2.5 mark and this is the first question unless you are confident about first question it will have impact on the other parts and this only for in classroom we cannot do everything that i will give material state by state i will give everything no problem in mind maps also i will give these aspects will help you to give more more and more evidence but most of the time our questions will not be just to write list of the it never ask upsc never ask list out the, all the paleolithic site it only say how what kind of cave architecture or cave painting describe the life of paleolithic stage mesolithic stage like that but this will help you to give 60% of the score now last one in this paleolithic you just make a map and in that map we are going to show these places this is atiram pakam because this is very important many times uh, this was asked then there is a place called ponsgi Ponsgi If you identify one mark comes 
for the rest 1.5 mark if it is a paleolithic some words you can write broadly paleolithic characteristics if you remember any specific term that will help you a lot 2.5 out of 2.5 you will get next even in kerala also in a place called palgat palgat nagarjuna konda now you see this is in tamil nadu this is in andhra pradesh one in kerala one in karnataka because we have limited space but we have want to show regional variety then bimbetka Iran Valley Didwana Belan Valley even near bangladesh area also we have one place lal mai lal mai in bihar we have a place paisra and here port war plateau and sanghao sanghao these are few places and you can include these also hatnora Odai and gradually these places entered into mesolithic then neolithic and this neolithic entered into urban phase so they laid the foundation for our first urban revolution so that point also you can use in the contribution of stone age people means they laid the foundation for first urbanization in the form of harappan valley civilization so indus valley civilization harappan civilization so that is how upsc questions used to come that way these are all the extra one point mark one 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 point extra marks today we'll stop here tomorrow we will do mesolithic and neolithic also you read this r s sharma Aras Sharma, Aras Sharma, NCERT. You read that one, but that that do not contain these many details. Upinder Singh has lot of detail. 
only for paleolithic at least for paleolithic you read upinder singh other parts we have other yes but for stone age upinder singh has very good quality content other books don't have that much content all right online students see you tomorrow thank you okay